What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise. That is right. Welcome back. We are coming off the heels of a huge, huge upset win over the Kansas City Chiefs. 37 to 24 and I'll tell you what our team was locked in and laser focused from the opening whistle both on the offensive and the defensive side of the ball we cannot rest on our laurels though because we now have sole ownership of the number one spot in the NFC East but the Cowboys are right on our heels at four and four and we play them in a couple weeks in week 11 but our team is playing very very good and I'll tell you one guy who is also playing very very good is your NFC offensive player of the week Mr. JJ Ford sophomore campaign out of Fresno State last week just lit up the stat sheets 346 passing yards two pass TDs zero interceptions and he continues to just be the anchor on this team, playing great in his second year. And also, too, Derek uh, Forrest, yeah? NFC Defensive Player of the Week on the Vikings. He used to be on the Sentinels, and we traded him. So good for Derek. Happy to see my man thrive. And I, I did like him. He was a good player. Maybe shouldn't have traded him, but whatever. But, uh, yeah, J.J. Ford, dare I say, potential MVP caliber season. Oh, he's fourth place in the standings. What? Come on now. Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, and Patrick Mahomes are all above him. It's got to be because of the picks. I know last week we saw that Patrick Mahomes only had one interception. J.J. Ford has six. Not sure about Burrow and Jackson, but fourth place in the runnings for MVP. That is something. And let's actually just check on the stats here. We're pretty much at the midseason mark and like to see how our St. Louis Sentinels are performing. So J.J. Ford is just killing it. 2,715 yards, 21 touchdowns, and six picks, a 118.1 passer rating. That is just awesome. And Dudley Saxton, the fan favorite here, having a pretty formidable season, 575 on the ground, averaging 4.2 yards per carry, but nine touchdowns. That might be best in the league. Only one fumble, and that did come last week. Dwight Jackson, I did work him into a few more sets here. Want to see him get on the field uh, he's hidden dev don't know his dev trait so hopefully we can reveal that now receiving we got possibly two of the best receivers in the NFL we got McLaurin here leading the team at 842 and Curtis Samuel with the lucky sevens 777 receiving yards on the season seven touchdowns combined between those two and McLaurin averaging over 100 yards a game Bart Burns also having a pretty good season as well, leading our team in touchdowns. That is awesome. Of course, another two-year pro coming out of that same draft class as J.J. Ford. And we got George Williams and Dudley Saxton actually making some uh, impact in the pass game, usually through, you know, the screen passes and stuff like that. But still, I love our receiver room. It is stacked. Like our offensive line, too. Haven't really allowed too many sacks. Uh, rookie Jarius Powell, he's star dev, by the way. In case anybody was curious, not that you probably were. But you never know. And then Jonathan Allen leading our team in TFLs as he tends to do. However, James Smith-Williams is playing very great. He's not far behind. And actually, Mr. Smith-Williams actually leads our team in sacks. We, we don't have that many sacks, but I do feel like it's pretty tough to get sacks in Madden. And then Kendall Fuller leading our team in picks. And then Quan Martin and... Emmanuel Forbes also have one as well. Got a lot of players with some good pass deflections. Our secondary is cooking. I love, love that group. They are playing at a high level. Lots of forced fumbles on the season as well. So you love to see that. And then can't forget about our man, Joey Sly. Only one missed kick on the year. He is the reigning kicker, best kicker in the league. You see that award winner tag there. So got to give some love to my man, Joey. He is kicking it at a pretty high level. Taking on the Tampa Bay Bucks in the NFC South today. Three and five. What do they got cooking? What, what kind of team do they got? Um, not really. They're the second worst team in points per game. Only allowing 17.6. That is or only scoring 17.6. I should say, and they don't have Baker Mayfield under center. Oh, no, they got Trey Lance. They got DeAndre Swift. So I think defending the outside run sounds like a good idea to me. And then as far as the Bucks defense, now their defense does look pretty good. They only allow 20.5, but they are playing the Sentinels, and we do tend to score a lot of points. They're really good against the run, but not so good against the pass. So why don't we start out throwing it deep? 
I mean, why would we not? JJ Ford seems to do pretty well with that. And let's also make the goal of two plus passing touchdowns. I want to see Ford continue this uh, trajectory that he has been on. And again, I know he's only fourth in the in the running for MVP, but we still got a lot of season to go. And I wouldn't be surprised if my man could possibly grab that award in this season. Got some key upgrades here, and then we are going to dive right into action. Our starting strong safety cam curl. I am, I mean, I really feel like Cam hasn't really done too much, like, as far as interceptions. We're going to give him an upgrade to zone, which lowers his morale, but gives him a temporary boost. So, whatever. It offsets itself, and uh, he will go up to an 85 overall. The main man, the Saxonator. Is it any question? He is an elusive back. That is probably the only upgrade that I am ever going to give him, because that's what Dudley thrives on. That is what has propelled him into this starting role. So why would I go anywhere else? My man's like five Ooh. foot nine. I'm not going to give him, you know, power back type of upgrades, at least not right now. Damian Lewis, our starting left guard. I would like, uh, we'll give him 80 to power. That will get him also up to an 80 overall. He's up for a contract as well. Gets a nice plus three to pass block power. You love to see that. And then finally, our rookie, Jarius Powell. I haven't really talked too much about him. He is an offensive lineman, unfortunately, so there's not really, you know, too much to talk about unless he's doing poorly, but I think he's pretty good. I mean, he's definitely developing pretty well. He's a star development player, which, you know, all offensive linemen typically are with the rare exception of a couple. Jarius is very strong and I guess pass block power and his power. He's more of a finesse guy, looks like. So I guess his power probably what needs to be upgraded the most. We'll go ahead and let the CPU handle the rest of these guys, and we are going to dive into action here. Week 9 in season number 3, and if you guys are fired up for some more St. Louis Sentinels content, and you want to see us make this big, big playoff push, please like the video and subscribe. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers here, guys. At 1,000 subscribers, I will do an NFL jersey giveaway. So please help me get there. And you should subscribe if you're not because I do drop Madden content all the freaking time. So you will always have content at your fingertips. But without further ado, guys, we are ready for this game. Let's get down to Sentinels Field and get ready for action. Let's see if we can keep this offense cooking. We are definitely playing some ball. We are definitely playing some ball. That much is for sure. And I really, really like our offense, guys. I mean, you know, I talked about it a couple episodes ago. We only got three draft picks, but I'm fine with that because we are, and I'm probably going to focus most of that on the defensive side of the ball. But we are about to go into free agency with some money for the first time ever in this franchise. Probably we'll go into free agency with like 40 mil or something like that. And we have not really been able to target too many free agents. So I'm looking to spend that money on probably best player available but we're gonna start this thing out in the shotgun with a levels concept and there's Jahan John Dotson has been he's our third our third option our slot guy but we've really seen you know George Williams make more catches than Jahan I think as a matter of fact we have uh Dudley actually has more yards than George Williams I mean uh than Jahan Dotson in a nine here let's see if Dudley can get it going looking for some cutback lanes and uh via Vita Vea and others were there to meet Dudley Osa Odigazua who is on this team now apparently is here and now it's a third and nine so we need to definitely definitely convert this one and hopefully keep the good times rolling Bart Burns or Jahan Dotson I mean I'm sorry Jahan, I'm sorry to disrespect you like that by calling you Bart Burns because you have made two clutch catches already for 32 or 34 yards. And the Sentinels are moving on the opening drive of the ball game. A quick look at the Bucks defense here. Kalaja Kansi is the starting left end. Dietrich Wise Jr. to Quan Graham here at the right end. Of course, Vita Vea, he's probably their best player. And Osa Odigazua, so they must be playing in like a 4-3. Type of set, uh, two-year man, Eric Stokes and Yaya Diaby are the left outs. Jelani Tavai and also Jalen Foster is here as well. Joe Tryon, Shoyinka, and Dante Gaffney, the rookie, are the right outs. Then you got Jamel Dean, Carlton Davis, Kenny Moore. Good corners, so got to watch them. Don't want to be thrown. And Antoine Winfield, of course. So good secondary to go along with Ryan Neal. So hopefully my man J.J. Ford can stay clean today. He almost had a pick last week, but luckily... 
that one got called back, and he did not have that go towards his resume. Uh, so I feel like if we want to get that MVP award, we're going to have to definitely keep my man clean. And there's Terry, always clean on the catches and pushing the pile forward. Terry going to get this thing down to the 16-yard line, and we are cooking on our opening drive of the game. Can we get the outside run going with Dudley? That's the question. Got some good blockers, and Terry, if you would have just held a block, Dudley and his 93 speed, I think, would have found the end zone. But McLaurin, I mean, look, he does enough uh, through the air. I, if he doesn't block, look, I'm not saying he shouldn't, but I'm not also not going to lose any sleep over it because, like, I mean, my man's a beast every single year, year in and year out <laughs> through the air. So whatever, I'll give him a little pass, but not going to give a pass to Damian Lewis and the offensive line. They appear to have no interest in the run blocking game on that play. Third and seven, this is a big one here. Definitely don't want to come out and uh, settle for a field goal if we don't have to. And Dudley might hang on to that and he dropped it. Oh, Dudley, Dudley, Dudley. Dudley, Dudley, Dudley. It was good coverage by Ryan Neal. And Dudley, you know, not the most illustrious receiver. So, I mean, I'll, I guess I'll give him a pass on that one. But man, oh man. He had six and let it slip through his fingertips. But a field goal on the opening drive, I mean, you know, points are points. We'll certainly take it. Definitely would have liked to have six, but going up early on the scoreboard, I'll take it. And look at Trey Lance here. What is he up to these days? Obviously, his career in real life did not pan out how many had expected, and I'm sure how Trey had hoped. And I guess they just said, screw Trey Lance's stats. Aww. Don't need to look at that. So sorry, Trey. I tried, brother. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at Madden like so many of us are in real life. So Trey going to come out eye here. It's going to be a give to the running back. And that is Andrew Simmons, the rookie out of USF. That was the Bucks' second round pick in this previous draft. They also have DeAndre Swift, too. So not sure why DeAndre wasn't in on that one. There's Swift. Okay. He is back now. I mean, look. Not arguing with it. DeAndre is a very good player. And that is going to be a nice check. To oh, no. He was targeting the receiver there, Chris Carter. But somebody, I believe it was Kendall Fuller, got in there to break the pass up. And that is the thing about these DBs that we have. Even if they're not getting picks, I just feel like we're always in great, great position to make a play on the ball. And don't know what that is. I know what that is. It's Emmanuel Forbes. Trey Lance was trying to go to Mike Evans, and I don't know what that is. He just threw up a Lucky Charms pot of gold at the end of the rainbow on that one. Wasn't even close to Evans at all. And we just showed a pregame. Ford has one pick on the season. Make that two because he is going to come away with the clutch, clutch pick six. Buccaneers better wake up, and they better wake up fast because they are slowly, slowly slipping Imagine if we did score six on that opening drive, or seven rather. It'd be 14 nothing ball game right now. And I thought Jonathan Allen was supposed to have his X Factor activated. Wasn't that a thing? Wasn't that a thing from the last uh, the scenario from the last game? I don't know. Jeremy Rucker going to be picking up a first down there. Kate Otten. Matter of fact, let's just take a quick look at the Bucks roster here. Kate Otten is injured, so he's not going to be in this game. So they got Trey Lance and Jordan Love, too. Second string. Wow. That would definitely not be happening in real life. DeAndre uh, Swift and Andre Simmons, the rookie I mentioned out of USF. Carlos Perryman, a second-round guy as well, is here. Kari Blossom game. And then they got Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, Chris Carter, who is also a two-year man, and Trey Palmer. So pretty good receivers, but then tight end. They're really missing Kate Otten right now. Offensive line, they got Tristan Wirfs. He's pretty good. But aside from that, I mean, nothing really too crazy. So this Bucks team, I would say, not very good. And we just pretty much, I will say, dismantled the Chiefs in the last game. So there is no reason why we should not do the same to the Bucks. But there's Chris Godwin. Emmanuel Forbes was there as well. But that time was a bit out of position in a 21-yard reception by Godwin. Four minutes to go here in the first. Bucks now behind the sticks as they lost four on that previous play. And we already got full momentum. Oh, nice truck there by DeAndre Swift, pushing Kendall Fuller aside. But rookie Tony Hoover, who's also star dev, I didn't show that. 
The way he's played, though, he should be no dev. He should be invisible dev because he has not played good at all. And we traded up quite a bit to get him. Trey Lance going to step out of the pocket and James Smith Williams, our sack leader on the season. Yes, you heard me correctly. He's going to be in there to force fourth and long. Now, Trey Lance is one of these. I talk about this a lot. There's like a certain archetype in quarterback in Madden where at the first sign of pressure, the QB kind of good punt there, by the way, uh, from Camarda. But the first sign of pressure that the QB sees, they kind of like scramble out of the pocket and get paranoid. Trey Lance is definitely in that category. So we'll see if that has any bearing on how he plays today. Dudley Saxton. Let's uh, see if we can hit this little hole here on the left side. Need a good block from our fullback, Michael Burton. It was held there for a second, only for a minimal, minimal gain, though. Got a mesh concept here, but maybe Terry up the seam. That might be my first read um it's not but bart burns is my second read oh and he actually stays in bounds look at bart with the fancy footwork you love to see that from your superstar tight end Let's pick this up boys third and ten coming out in this coveted gun vertical that uh you see us come out in all the time and oh man i was torn between george williams and curtis samuel i felt like they were both semi open there on the outside Normally, I look for Terry as my first read, but I didn't like how the safety was kind of uh, cheating down a little bit. So offensive line couldn't hold their blocks for long enough, and we almost take the sack. And oh, big hit there by Trovon Wiley. Oh, my God. He's a rookie, too, out of Georgia Tech. Whoever the Bucks kick returner is, they're going to feel that one in the morning. <laughs> Trey Lance coming out, single back. It's, oh, nice play fake there. He got me, and there's a catch from Mike Evans. Mike Evans playing pretty good to start, and that should be the last play here of the first quarter, which it is 10-0 on the scoreboard. I mean, I would say dominated by the Sentinels, yes, but really it's just that pick six. Our offense hasn't looked great to start. We've had some good plays here and there, but Dudley definitely, which I really want to see Dudley just explode onto the scene, have like a buck 25 or a buck 50, something like that on the ground that would be awesome now trey lance changing the play up at the line we are gonna stay true to what we called got newly acquired middle linebacker tony knight there and that's gonna be a check down to jeremy ruckert for a gain of six bucks got the ball smack dab on midfield now play some good zone coverage here i feel like trey lance is definitely gonna pass it and i mean every time i say that i should just stop telling you guys what i feel like because when i say i feel like they're gonna do this i feel like they're gonna do that they literally always do something different. Now, I am pressing up here. We are set in the house. I need Jamin Davis and or Tony Knight. Somebody to get in the backfield, and no one's going to get in the backfield. Swift might be off to the races. Luckily, Cam Curl was there to make the touchdown saving tackle. And the Bucks finally, for the first time today, are putting together a pretty, pretty solid drive. See if they can pay it off with points. I sure hope not. Let's see if also Jamin Davis, we're going to cancel the blitz and drop him out in coverage. And, oh, I was about to say that was almost a great catch. Couldn't keep the feet inbounds, though. We're a dime package now. Guess a pass, shade it underneath. See what Trey Lance does here. Probably, yep, definitely going to be a pass. And Lance trying to escape the pocket. Mike Evans is getting open with ease. So I guess after that first miscommunication where Trey Lance just bombed it over his head, I think they kind of went over to the sideline, had a little powwow, if you will, and uh, they seem to have things figured out. Now, the Bucks are coming out zero wide receivers out of the I form. It's going to be a fullback dive to Blossom game. Cam Curl does stop him, but at the one-yard line. I love calling this play in this situation. See if it's a fullback dive again. We got our two Mike linebackers here ready for it. If it is, and there's Tony Knight. Go ahead and flex on him, Tony. We acquired him from the Giants in that trade with Brian Robinson. First time we really called his name in a key play. Big third down here. Bucks finally chance to uh, put some points on the board here and hoping that we can deny them of that privilege, but we're not going to because Jeremy Rucker at the tight end, the four-year pro in this franchise, the Ohio State Buckeye though, so I do like him for that, but I don't like the fact that he scored a touchdown. And as, as good as our defense has played, 
You wouldn't be able to tell on that last drive. I get it. But as good as our defense has played, our offense is going to need to step up on this next drive because we don't want to let the Bucks creep back into this thing. Not going to go away from the run here as much as I probably should. We're going to go draw play to Dudley. There's some nice positive yardage. Finally, some signs of life in the running game. Seven rushes for 17 yards. I mean, con flab it. That is not, not going to get the job done. And what am I going to do? I'm going to go back to Dudley again. But this time, let's go ahead and send McLaurin over if we can. We certainly will. Maybe that will uh, just kind of trick the defense a little bit. We are going to try to go outside run again. They got lots of linebackers out there. Dudley, I need a block. I mean, that could have spelled disaster. He does pick up four. So I guess making something out of nothing. Boy, I sure wish Terry was getting pressed, but unfortunately he is not. So instead, we're just going to target Bart Burns, who just had a great game last week. Picking up kind of where he left off, now at two receptions for 37 yards, and the Sentinels do get the ball into Buccaneers territory. All right, gents, I'm going once per game, PA, cross, single back, X bunch, nasty. Seems like the best time to do it because we're kind of letting the Bucks creep back into this thing and we don't want to do that. Oh, Curtis is so open. This could be six. Curtis, keep running. I mean, okay. Getting the ball down to the nine yard line, not the worst thing in the world. And if you watch this channel, you know all about the PA cross, single back, X bunch, nasty. I call it once per, I've talked about it every episode. I'm about to get a freaking t-shirt made that just says X bunch, nasty. How many of you guys would buy that? Let me know. Maybe I'll do a little merch link in the comments. X Bunch Nasty t-shirt? I don't know. That sounds kind of lit. That's what the, the kids are saying nowadays, right? And Ford, do you have the wheels? Oh my God, Ford got in with his slow ass. That is definitely, I think, his first rushing touchdown this season. I think. Maybe he has one. I don't know. Well, Ford is a slow, slow brother. But hey, there was some blocking there. We had some guys upfield. Also, I see the Dallas Cowboys are losing to the Denver Broncos. That's a very key game to keep our eyes on because if the Dallas Cowboys keep losing and we keep winning, we're just going to gain traction on them in the NFC East. But how's about Ford finishing off that drive with his legs you love to see it. New drive here for Trey Lance and the Bucks. Let's see if it will yield some points or if our defense can actually step up. Mike Evans is starting to become a problem. I'm not going to lie to you. Trey Lance now up to a puck 25 as well. I thought that that first drive may be an indication on how Trey Lance would perform today. But right now, he's starting to uh, turn on the Jets a little bit. So we got to be careful. See, uh, he got Swift in the backfield now. We'll see if he decides to go to Swift, and he is on the outside. Tony Knight's there, but he can't make the tackle, and a wonderful block there by Jeremy Ruckert. And all of a sudden, this Bucks team starting to look like a problem here. All right, so uh, palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. Today for dinner, my wife cooked spaghetti, and it was actually pretty good. It was the spicy kind. Okay. So first and goal here. Come on, Sentinels. Come on, John Allen. That's what I really need. He was supposed to have his X Factor on. I swear I saw that as a scenario last episode. I didn't see that joint on to start this game, but I did see Chris Carter, two-year pro out of San Diego State. That was the Bucks' third round pick back in 2024. He made the catch, and all of a sudden, this Bucks team has come alive. And I'll tell you what. Last two minutes, the Bucks get the ball after halftime. We really, really got to march downfield and score a touchdown here. We got Dwight Jackson in, rookie out of UAB. Let's see how he does on the script. Well, okay. I mean, I thought that might have been like illegal touching or something, but Dwight catches it somehow. Ford now up to 140, 7 for 10. So 70% completion. You love to see that. Now, I am going to press Terry. And if Antoine Winfield even shows the slightest chance of coming down i may target him which he did and this could be terry all day every day baby terry yes play recognition at a 99 for your boy that's all i gotta say i mean i saw press coverage on terry 
on the corner back there. The second I saw Antoine Winfield come down like he was going to blitz or stop the run, I knew, I just knew that was going to be an easy six. But the only thing is, did we score too quickly? That is the question. And I'll tell you what, Bucks, you got to be really, really careful here because there's still 54 seconds left and we still got all of our timeouts. They may just be content to run it. No, they're not. Trey Lance going to step up and dive. And we're going to call a timeout. 50 seconds left. I'm showing no mercy. I'm going balls to the wall. Balls are hitting the wall right now, just so you know. Because remember, the Bucks do get the ball back after halftime. So if we score here, we will have a very, very good cushion. And I will be a happy boy. All right, let's see if we can get something going here. 41 seconds left. We're coming out gun. And maybe it's Bart Burns in the middle. I was initially looking for Samuel. Bart Burns caught it. We're going to go ahead and call a timeout. I mean, just like that, we got the ball pretty much already to the 50. And uh, not necessarily a fan of these plays that the coach is calling for me, but it's okay. I feel like actually Dudley might be open here. So let's see if that is true. No, it's just Bart Burns again. Bart Burns. I was torn between do I continue running it or do I go out of bounds? But Bart Burns is starting to come alive here. And I'm here for it. I absolutely love it. We got a chance here to go up big before halftime. Still got one timeout, 30 seconds. Let's see what can materialize. Ford! Surprised I didn't get grounding on that one. That was very, very close as Jamel Dean was right there in our grill. Let's put Dudley on a streak. I want to draw some of these linebackers away because maybe... Well, I didn't mean to do that, but Dudley actually catches it. Oh, my God. Pass led him down beautifully. And just when the Bucks were starting to come alive, the Sentinels turn it up to max volume. And we find ourselves in a very, very favorable position going into the locker room. Wow, 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 wow. This game is bonkers. I wasn't even... I wasn't even commentating because I was just sure that the Bucks were going to... Oh, my God, man. There you can see it right there. DeAndre Swift on the outside run. I wasn't even commentating because I was just trying to get into halftime. And, okay, well, this has been a roller coaster ride of emotions. Feeling confident, not feeling confident. Feeling confident, not feeling confident. I don't even know what to expect in this second half. But I can tell you what, I'm taking a freaking knee and we're getting into the gosh dang locker room. I mean, that was a very unfortunate series of events. Somebody get freaking Lemony Snickets on the phone here. Maybe he can make some sense out of this because I sure can't. But at any rate, 31-21 on the scoreboard. We're already at 275 passing yards. And J.J. Ford is doing J.J. Ford things, lighting up the stat sheet. But you know what? I am probably – I'm going to shift the focus to run inside. I'm not sure how long he can keep that going. And actually, Trey Lance has actually been pretty good. We're going to go defend the medium pass because I feel like Mike Evans has kind of carved us up like a Thanksgiving turkey, getting open in the middle of the field. And if the Buccaneers score here, we got ourselves – a very, very close ball game again. Hopefully, our defense can step up and play like they did on that first drive. All right, Sentinels, come on. I know that you got some better defense than this. Well, maybe you don't because DeAndre Swift is a problem. Seven rushes for 137 yards and a touchdown. I mean, granted, most of that came on that final drive, but I just can't even believe that that happened. Like, what is really going on here? It's going to be Swift again. This time, Tony Knight is there to shut him down for only a minimal gain of three. Bucks coming out in their full house package. Wow, running back, fullback, and tight end. And why can nobody tackle DeAndre Swift? I know DeAndre Swift is good, but, I mean, come on. Trade it to the Bears in real life, too. That's going to be really, really interesting to see what he does there in Chicago. Assuming the Bears are going to get Caleb Williams, but 
I mean, nothing's ever certain, but I, oh God, the cut is just vicious. What is going on? Shades of Nick Chubb and Derrick Henry in the Madden 23 Cupcake Relocation Franchise. If you haven't watched that, it's my first series on YouTube. And we had two running backs break the rushing record on us in that game. And it's kind of looking like DeAndre Swift might do the same thing today. And, I mean, the Bucks got more points now than the Chiefs had. All game, last game, tell me how that makes sense. And uh, I didn't mean to do that, really. Um, I guess verticals isn't the worst thing in the world, although I am going to put Curtis Samuel on a drag route in case we need him. But it could be George, so I guess it was a good call. Ford almost at 300 yards. So our running back, I mean, I'm sorry, our quarterback and their running back are both absolutely cooking. I kind of feel like draw plays are really the only thing that's really working for Dudley, and even that is limited. I mean, that's a decent run. I'll take five yards. But where's that? And <laughs> Dudley literally just put somebody on his shoulders. But where's that Dudley that we saw at the end of last season, breaking off 125, 150-yard gains? Or games. I don't know, but uh, I definitely want that guy back. And there's George. And definitely mistimed that as Ryan Neal, the safety, was in good position to make a play on the ball. Third and five here. This is a key, key drive. I do like Dudley on the screen. So let's see if it, he's getting held, man. Come on now. Oh, my God. What in tarnation. I mean, I kind of feel like what's a, what's a punt really going to do? Like... What is a punt really going to do in this situation? I mean, it's going to give them like, like plus 15 yards field position. It's going to be a touchback anyways. So we might as well go for it. And I think Curtis is the man for the job. He is. Wow. Risky, risky decision. Riverboat CJ over here making gambles. But I just, I had a really bad feeling if we punted that back to the Bucks because of the way they've been playing. And uh, really, I mean, we were kind of like, you know, in no man's land, so to speak. So Dudley, going to go back to your brother. Need you to do something. Nice juke there. I'll take a gain of six. Try Dudley again. See if he can hit a hole here. Vita Vey is a problem. He got into the backfield virtually untouched. So this probably would be field goal range, I would imagine. Terry getting pressed again. So maybe he's my first read. Nope. He's not. I like Bart Burns on the outside, but he dropped it. Butterfinger Bart. What are you doing, brother? I mean, we got to kick this field goal now. That's very unfortunate. Bart Burns had a chance to turn up field and get a first down, but unfortunately, he dropped it. And we are going to go up by six. But the way the Bucks are playing, I, I just don't have a good feeling about that. 204 yards for DeAndre Swift. Wow. Wow, that is something right there. And, I mean, what do we do in this situation? Like, I feel like we definitely got to play to stop the run. So maybe we'll use her up on our safety here, Quan Martin. See if it's going to be swift. It is going to be swift. And good thing we did use her on Quan Martin, or that one could have been a big, big gain. And we really got to find a way to get force the Bucks to punt. I mean, I'm pretty much going to be locked in on Swift here. Not going to lie to you. And these, I mean, dude, these cutbacks are insane. These cutbacks from Swift are insane. No way should he be at 222 yards today. Now, actually, Trey Lance is coming out empty, believe it or not. So, oh, God, that's going to be a bomb to Godwin. And what is, how do we play so well against the Chiefs? But we're letting the freaking, what are they, three and four bucks with Trey Lance at the helm? Absolutely torch us. So second and ten for the bucks here. Let's see what they do. Trey Lance going to get sacked. We paid Jonathan Allen all this money. And James freaking Smith Williams has been our defensive lineman of the year. And you know what? You know what? He is up for a contract as well. And I, I think we're just going to have to go ahead and pay my man. We're going to have to go ahead and pay my man. He has definitely 
earned it. Where's Trey Lance going to go here? He's going for it. Oh, good defense by Fuller. Instead of going for the pick, I just decided to swat that ball because it was a safe play. And we do, in fact, force the Bucks to punt, which is very good. And the way that they're playing, oh, terrible kick from Camarda, I think. Yeah. The way the Bucks are playing, I feel like we just need touchdown after touchdown after touchdown. All right, second and eight here. We're going to need some protection because we're coming out in the gun. Curtis is open, and there's Curtis doing Curtis Samuel things. And J.J. Ford is now at 337 in this game, putting the team on his back. Greg Jennings style. Don't go anywhere. We got a good one in store here. 34 to 28. Sentinels are knocking on the door. And of course, I want to score a touchdown. You always do. But this is definitely a point in the game where if we do have to settle for a field goal, it's not the worst thing in the world because it will at least make it a two score game. Now, coach called TE attack. You guys know how I feel about this play. Let's see if we can roll out possibly and hit our target bart burns or maybe slow jj ford i mean look my man's at three rushes for 14 yards and a touchdown so give him some props coach wants us to go te attack again not going to do that the adaptive ai here in madden will probably clue into that so second and four coming out single back let's see who we got open we're just going to give it to terry on the shallow crosser and he will pick up a first down. But like I said, I mean, a field goal here, not the worst thing in the world, but a touchdown, I will really, really feel more confident. Let's have our tight end, Cole Turner, block, and let's roll out on the boot. Let's just give it to Dudley. Can't get it done on the ground, on the ground. maybe through the air. Bucks have zero sacks today, which is good because... They are a team that tends to rack up the sacks. I think I am going to go away from the coach suggestions. I just feel really good about draw play in this scenario. I could be wrong, but I just feel good about it. And we are going to see if it is the right decision here on third and two. I think it is. Sacks is going to pick it up. Jelani Tavai dropped back in coverage. As soon as I saw that, we were off to the races. Uh, no one is on Terry. Okay, let's lob it up there. I mean, that was brain dead. That was brain dead. There was nobody on McLaurin. Like, what were the Buccaneers thinking? I mean, look at where the DB is compared to where Terry is. Like, that's Antoine Winfield, too. Good awareness. But, like, what's he doing? I mean, I maybe he's trying to bluff or something. But, like, it's a two-step drop and then a lob pass or a touch pass. Terry toe taps, and the Sentinels do put up a 40 bomb. Now, we are going to go for two here. And uh, really feeling good about this. It's going to take a lot for the Buccaneers to come back in this one. Not saying they couldn't do it, but there's sacks. Just like that. So, now the Sentinels go up big. 42-28 on the scoreboard. Let's just play some good defense. So even though DeAndre Swift has been a weapon, well, I was about to say it's probably going to be passing time for Trey Lance, but I guess they are trying to continue to ride the DeAndre Swift train, but I'll tell you what, it didn't prove to be very effective on that one. Now, I don't like the coverage here, so I think, no, we're going to stay true to it. Hayward blitzing, Trey Lance getting pressured, and there's DeAndre Swift. Threat in the run game, threat in the pass game, and I absolutely hate him. Yeah, Father Time is certainly not the Buccaneers' what? friend here. And it, okay, I was about to say, again, they still, it's going to be illegal touching by me. It's illegal touching on Jamin Davis. We just denied a sack on Trey. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Well, we are going to go ahead and decline that. Not even sure who got that sack. Maybe it was Dante Fowler. I think it was Dante Fowler and uh, he's also up for a contract too so do we extend him I mean he's getting pretty old think he's 31 maybe in this franchise and oh more pressure more pressure more pressure nice defense there by Kendall Fuller now I feel like we can just pin our ears back play good defense if they want to go underneath oh wow Kendall again but somehow Mike Evans hangs on 
And of course the Bucks are going to go for this. Like, why would they not? They may give this to DeAndre Swift too, but I don't necessarily think that they should. I could easily see him doing it or maybe a play action. It is going to be a run to Swift and Swift is Swift today. I mean, it's going to pad his stats. Yes, I am very embarrassed by that 239 on the ground from Swift. But the Bucks got to move faster than this. All right, come on, Sens. Just hang on for a little bit longer, and this one is yours. Nice deep. Fuller is everywhere. That wasn't even Fuller. That was Tony Knight. I'm sorry. Tony Knight having a good game. We've called his name a few times today. First time we've really called his name since we traded for him. And full house for the Bucks. I mean, okay, not sure that I agree with that. Trey Lance looking around. He is going to find Swift, but again, these little checkdowns. And look, Sentinels are the worst passing defense team in the league. But today we're doing a good job. I mean, not doing a good job on the ground, of course. But we are doing a good job limiting Trey Lance and uh, this passing attack. But... Swift is just all over the place. But again, that's fine. I mean, like I said, like three and a half minutes to go. It's a three score game, right? I think if my math is correct. Second and two, but the clock is ticking down. Okay, so a two score game. I was wrong. So I guess I kind of understand the Bucks logic, but still, I mean, there's a lot of time left and DeAndre Swift's still making me nervous here in the latter stages of this game. I got to be honest. Also, nobody is on Jeremy Ruckert, so we got to change that immediately. It's going to be a play fake and good defense there by Tony Hoover. Thank you. Love calling your name because I'll tell you what. Haven't been able to call it too much in this franchise in this season. So glad I got to call it there, and that was good man coverage there by tony hoover and now oh it's justin hayward in the backfield gg sentinels they tried to do uh inside zone to deandre swift we had justin hayward on blitz and that my friends should be ball game wow. okay so the bucks might actually score here we punted the ball because i was just trying to kill some clock maybe they won't and a minute and four seconds, though, they would have to score and get an onside kick and score again. So, I mean, the, you know, it's not impossible, but it's highly, highly improbable. I'm not really a fan of the fact that it's still technically a ball game. Inaccurate pass by Trey Lance. Jamin Davis was uh, on the cut or Justin Hayward, maybe. Jamin Davis, I think that was, was on the coverage. Um... But still, a minute to go, I mean, even if they score, chances of them actually winning this game, highly improbable. So, Trey, fourth and goal. He's starting to see ghosts out there, Sam Darnold style. And they did score. So, okay. Mike Evans, I mean, that was like a heck of a throw by Trey Lance. So, technically, not out of the ball game yet. And I would be a very, very sad boy. If the Bucks did, in fact, get this on. We've seen that before, though. We've seen them get the onside kick. I need the hands team out here right now. Let's go ahead and shut this thing down. Put this thing to bed. Put a bow on it and get out of Sentinel's field with the W. Bucks will not be able to stop the clock. Did get a little bit too close for comfort. But we're still going to get the win nonetheless. So CJ Smalls and the boys will get the win. Not a fan of how close that one potentially became. I mean, I do still feel like we we didn't dominate. So our defense played good on that first drive. And there was a couple moments here and there where they still played good. But our defense did kind of let us down in this one. I mean, 34 points. And Trey Lance is going to end up finishing with 275, which... He had like 194 when we last checked his stats. So that is kind of unfortunate. JJ Ford, though, played phenomenal. 152.8 QB rating, 355 through the air and three touchdowns. But got to figure out how to get more production out of Dudley. DeAndre Swift just embarrassed us. 240 through the ground, 240 DeAndre and two touchdowns. Mike Evans came alive in that game. 
but so did the St. Louis Sentinel, St. Louis Savior, Terry McLaurin. Four catches for 101 and two touchdowns. Art Burns played a key impact. Curtis Samuel had that big, big fourth down conversion. And uh, we did have a pick from Emmanuel Forbes, so that was good. And how about James Smith-Williams, our sack leader on the season, might have to go ahead and extend this man's contract. J.J. Ford getting a well-deserved upgrade. Yes, indeed. What does Ford even need to really get better at? Play action, I guess. So play action will come from what? That will come from, is it Scrambler or Improviser? Or do we even get upgrades on play action? Not 100% sure, but we're going to go Improviser anyways, and we don't get play action, but... J.J. Ford is a 92 overall, playing up to a 94. Superstar X-Factor in only his second year in the NFL. So, a win's a win. Not happy with the defense. We're going to have to figure that out coming up against the Vikings and the Cowboys in the next couple of weeks. But Sentinels are 6-3 and three in control of the NFC East. And at the end of the day, the record is the only stat that matters. So, that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.